everybody, welcome to Experts Dig In with Doggies for Dementia. I'm Carmen DeVelis. I'm the founder of Doggies for Dementia Foundation. And today our chat is with Sylvia Warsham, who is a really, really wonderful person. I will tell you, she's my friend. I love her. She's just so, uh, has so much information and yet is a lovely, lovely person. And I'm going to really save the meat of that description of what she does. I can say she's a coach, but that I know is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm going to let, leave it to you, Sylvia, to really introduce yourself and tell us. And then we're going to have a really wonderful talk today about COVID-19 and how that can impact caregivers. Sure. I have some opinions about that myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So you want me to introduce myself. So let me say a couple of words. I, um, I've been an empowerment coach since 2017. And before then, I came from the sales background. So that's what I was doing for a long, long time. And I'm big on transitions and, and major transitions in life. And that's what, that's what my specialty is, is in turning points. And what bigger turning point than COVID-19, right? I mean, everybody's going through these major changes and, and really not understanding how to navigate that in a, in a cheerful way with a mindset that's going to stay strong and positive during so much social distancing. It can really get some people down, but it's giving us some, some perspective on people that are caretakers that do this for a living with older parents, and they have been socially distancing for quite some time now, haven't they? And, uh, so this is no news for them, but for the rest of us, we're getting a slice of, you know, we're, we're getting a, an indication of what they go through day in and day out. And I got to tell you, it, it can be tough. It could be very, very tough for them. And uh, we're here to help them and support them in any way we can. And we do that through various channels. Um, I know for me, I do a Focus Friday video series that we'll get into later that focuses on people's personal growth in any situations that may arise. So let's talk about transition a little bit, because I really love that. You know, our audience, people are listening who are caregivers now. And, you know, part of our mission for Doggies for Dementia is to educate and to raise awareness. And so some people are listening who are already caregivers mm -hmm. and um, are learning to navigate. So it might be people who've been caregivers for years or who are just learning or those who need to learn more about it because they see that, you know, that that's in their future. And um, one of the things I learned as far as with dementia is concerned is that isolation and loneliness is pervasive, you know, and, and caregivers themselves are, you know, often have to be, or perceived really need to be kind of selfless and that mm -hmm. the other person's needs come first. And then now we have where maybe the help that they've had before can't come in or you know, the extra worry because not all, but many people with dementia are older and mm -hmm. are in that really high risk population um, for, um, you know, for having more problems with the COVID-19. And um, if you were gonna give one piece of advice for caregivers who are facing all of these, um, all of these stressors, Mm -hmm. what, what would it be? What, what, what would you tell me? I'm a caregiver. I, I, I'm feeling kind of lost. My resources are limited. I was already yeah. lonely. <laughs> right? the, mind, the mindset is, is key here. You know, if the, if the mindset falls, if kind of everything falls and your health falls with it. So one of the key points I always like to, to give people in general is to maintain your mental health at the most positive you can, meaning shift your focus. If, you're, if, you, if you sense that your focus is um, getting antsy or you're getting stressed, try to keep that stress level at a minimum. And what can you do to do that? You can get more sleep. You can certainly make sure that you're sleeping better and your nutrition is really important. So how you fuel your body is extremely critical here. If you start eating junk food and sugar and sweets, you're going to start feeling really bad and your body is going to resent it. And here comes the stress and here comes the anxiety. Right. Uh, so, so maintain the basic, basic sleep and nutrition are very key here. And 
Well, and it takes that time. Climb, then your focus can shift. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. something with that nervous energy, kind of interrupt that pattern of anxiety building up. And uh, and one of the things that has been key for me has been to uh, do something with that negative energy. You know, do something that I love for just five minutes, even if it's just five minutes, just to snap you out of it. I put in like, awesome music to go to set myself out of it because you can't really leave the house when you're a caretaker. You have a, a person you're in charge of and you don't have anybody helping you out. So it's not like you can do, you know, go for a walk or anything like that. You can't do that. So you know, focus on what you can do. Yeah. So think of the things that you can do inside that house that will channel that negative, anxious energy and it'll give you kind of like a boost of some sort. Mm -hmm. That helps yeah. I love the nutrition one because that is something, even if there isn't time, and sometimes literally five minutes is a lot to ask, but uh, mm -hmm. the, the making choices and not bringing the junk food into the house, I know mm -hmm. if it's here, it, I'm going to eat it. So, <laughs> because it's what I reach for and it's easy, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, you now I have the healthy foods, have it ready to go um, as much as possible. And sleep can be a challenge for some. And, you know, and both of this is for the caregiver and for the person that they're caring for, of course, because mm -hmm. um, the higher sugary junk food, the, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, can lead to other, other behavior problems and personality changes and things that make it really, really tough. Um, you know, you mentioned mindset and I hear that term all the time, but I wonder if you can break that down and explain what mindset means to you. To me. Mm -hmm. What does mindset mean? Mindset for me is a state of being, you know, a state of being uh, where I'm channeling or I'm, I'm channeling my mind to a very particular set a focus, if you will. Uh, so, so, what I'm example, thinking about. So, for example, for example, if and there came a time a while back that I caught myself in my relationships to be very negative. And so I had a negative mindset. My focus was all negative. So, the, the key for us to change to shift the focus, uh -huh. shift the focus. So, if, for example, my speech, my speech, I caught myself saying, don't, won't shouldn't wouldn't couldn't and so one simple key I've, I've recommended to people that work with me is take the no out of your speech now that's easier said than done because when you catch yourself you catch yourself saying well I can't do that or I won't do that the problem with doing that is that then you are basically programming your mind to think that way I don't want to do that so it focuses in on the don't want to do that so you want to shift that over to a, a positive positive way of speaking. So I want that. I desire that. I can do that. I will do that. I get to do that. I don't have to. I get to. Uh, I will uh, not. I'll never. Things like that. And that in itself, just by shifting that focus over that simple key, it has really helped break down how the mind is setting up like that's what we call it mindset it sets up for negativity or it sets up for positivity and how you speak and how you carry yourself aside from the focus is what will but we'll yeah. i think it was brene brown the first time i ever heard this phrase and it it changed how my perspective is and how i kind of set up my mind to think and um she said the words you know the story i'm telling myself is and then you have a choice, right? Put it in perspective. So if the story I'm telling myself is every, you wake up and go, everything's going to go wrong today again. I just know it, right? Versus uh -huh. the story I'm telling myself is we're going to have a great day and I can handle it. Mm -hmm. And because um, I think when, and I know myself, when I've had the mindset of this is too hard, this is too hard, mm -hmm. guess what? It's too hard. It is. The opposite is true. It's like, I can handle this. I can handle this. Pretty soon, I can handle it. And I find a way, right? I find a way. Uh, may not be the way I had planned. <laughs> we have to give up control, right? But some people don't even realize how much they, they believe that way. But, but then their body kind of gives a different 
opinion of what they're actually feeling inside. So get, to give you an example, I've, I've seen people and I play pickleball, well, I used to before COVID-19, and people that have lost the point, for example, their body will show it right away. They will show, their body will start to slump. Well, that's information for the mind. The mind is taking all of that information in and it has zero ability to accept or reject the information I'm sharing with you right now, the unconscious part, the part that's on automatic. And that's what most people don't understand. Every day, the way you talk, the way you carry your body, your focus, all of that matters in setting yourself up for either positive outcomes or negative outcomes. But okay, it's so maybe as simple as standing up straight, taking deep breaths, breaths, right? Taking yeah. deep breaths and, the, and then, you know, bringing forth, I got this. I got mm -hmm. this. Everything's doable. I got it. And... You know, those negative type thoughts come in for everybody. And then mm -hmm. it's a matter of just letting them go, right? And going, yeah. okay, and I will find a way. And I will find a way. Absolutely. So, but it's not, it's not like, um, well, maybe in the beginning, it feels like it's kind of fake to say that. But in time, and it doesn't take long before that becomes mm -hmm. who you are, you know, how you are. Absolutely. How you are. How you are. You're saying we recommend a lot of affirmations, daily affirmations, and a lot of people feel real funny, like you said. Yeah. Um, we're in agreement with that. I know I did at the beginning. I was like, I feel silly doing this because they recommend that you stand in front of a mirror and you okay. have five affirmations, and then you are also embodying certain role models. So you're, you're, you're let's say Brene Brown. Let's just pick Brene Brown because you mentioned her. Mm -hmm. Her physiology, how does she carry her body? How does she speak? What, does she look directly at people? That physiology is what you want to model when you do your affirmations because you're basically copying her. You're using her as a role model. I the day that you that. make that, then you yeah. just do that. And, and then it starts becoming you. You start becoming you because it becomes a habit that you're forming. You're interrupting the pattern of being a certain way. So... So that's what I do that. I do that with, say, Carol Burnett. I embody Carol Burnett. She is my role model. She's my higher name, Carol, you know. <laughs> and when I'm operating at that level, I model her physiology, ah. her voice, her presentation, how she would handle certain things, you know, especially when I don't feel good on the days I don't feel good. I kind of, do my little power move and 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 i think what would carol do you know how would she handle the situation so pick someone that you want to model after someone that you admire very much um who has what you want that mindset that you want who has that in the world it could be a character it could be anybody you want it to be it could be somebody you know somebody's long past, you know, it doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. And those are things that are, that anybody can do at home right now, because it's not like we can go to a conference and pick up on that. But what, what we do have available to us is we have electronics and we have books that we can be reading to really understand what, how they carry themselves. And Brene Brown is everywhere. So, I so to do anything. Yeah, one, you know, I, I got to say, of all the times that I have been told, stand in front of the mirror, and I know I'm in good company with this, it is hard to do. <laughs> it was hard for me to look at myself and like, oh my gosh, I've never done that really, and it felt uncomfortable. And then, and then you know, thinking, well, yeah, um, if I'm embodying and saying I am going to be like, um, almost like, okay, I am going to take on that role that soon enough it becomes how you react with the world then it becomes you your version of your version of carol burnett right mm -hmm. and, yeah so i really love that that's helpful back then i've got her books and i and i've some of the stuff that i've actually ended up doing in my life that kind of required some gumption i've looked for carol burnett because she had gumption she oh. had Courage. Oh she gosh, was yeah. in a very different yeah. industry that was very difficult to be in at the time. Yeah. Um, and she did it with such grace and humor, which I love, you know, because who doesn't need humor during COVID-19? I think we all do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just you, know, you know, it's not something we've ever been through and there's so many questions out there and 
you know, I know when you've got someone that's already fragile and they're worrying about, okay, we got to make sure they're safe. It's an extra layer of, of concern and, and even burden. And uh, then you're saying, okay, now take care of yourself. And um, so I, I, lo I'm, I love affirmations too. And I feel goofy, almost like that Saturday night, Saturday night live skit where the guy is like, I am worthy and I am smart. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. <laughs> you know, I remember deep thoughts by somebody. I can't really <laughs> see. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It, they're really, really helpful. And Louise Hay is one of the first authors I read about affirmations and the power. And um, sometimes I listen, I will listen. And um, I have something called the life script that was made for me and um, that describes my life, the, the mm -hmm. life that I, I see myself living in. And I, I'll begin with that too. And I'm talking like three minutes, you know, three minutes time that starts my day off just right and um so that's helpful and, and i know you mentioned the two book if there's something to read or to listen to i think that's inspiring that's really helpful too yeah, yeah. because you got to focus on what you can do yeah and simple you know, things when, too. when you when you you think about all the things you can't do that really starts to close your mind up immensely and yeah. then it just brings you down completely I and I found that even just getting dressed up because right now we could all be in our pajama bottoms and nobody knows, right? Well, I might be. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah. I, I put on makeup. And putting, up and putting on makeup is a big deal for the women, you know? Uh, for guys, I mean, they don't have to do much to themselves. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who said, even before this, she works from home a lot. And every day, and she was corporate for many years, every day she gets up, puts on her dress, you know, probably I, she dresses sharp like you, Sylvia. Puts on her dress, her dress, dress, does her hair, makeup, and no matter if she's at home all day and that's her plan, she looks like she's ready, camera ready, or appointment ready in her case. So she says, well, if someone calls, I would like to be ready. Even if it's scheduled the next day, I'm ready that day. And that's part of her mindset. Yeah. She's ready to work, right? And, so. and I remember at a time when, I was getting interviewed when I was when I worked at Pfizer by a, a national speaker who was it was a select group of us that were interviewed, and people thought I was crazy when I said that it was over the phone. But I actually dressed up for the interview because it it affects the way you believe and think about yourself. Yeah. And it won't it, it for me. For other people, it may not be the case, but people thought that was insane when I did that. But I was like, no, it, it's a it's a psychological thing Me that too. you're, and it's a it's a shift that goes on in your mind. Yeah. So the shift that's what they that, that's what is part of it. Yeah, I, I found when I was at home more the thing that helped me. I didn't have to do makeup and stuff, but I would put on a little bit of my favorite cologne and switch it up like I would if I was leaving. That. Mm -hmm that kind of brought that feeling for me of um like <laughs> not totally in sweatpants and looking like that right so yeah, it matters it does matter especially right now especially during these times where the world has slowed down so much and that being so quiet unless you have kids or dogs like us then uh, you're really uh, quite quiet anymore but um so, you know, maybe part of them to bring that around again, part of the mindset is that it is okay to find those little things that bring you peace of mind and that yep. set your day in the right or reset is the case maybe for most of us, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing pretty good and then something happens like, okay, okay, I got it. I can, I can get back on, I can get back to where I was and yep. you know, to consciously think about it and go, yeah, okay, I have a choice. You have choices and we have something that we term investor reset button and it's a daily ritual that you have. And so for those caretakers that are listening right now, pick up a ritual that is meaningful to you. So whatever that looks like for you, it could be meditation, it could be prayer, it could be journaling. For me, it's journaling, but that's just my, my thing. And the first thing I do when I wake up is I spend some quality time with my puppy that kind of brings my anxiety down. And, and then I start to journal. I start to journal and I declutter my mind because the day before there's just so much worry and so much stress. And once you put it on paper, it's gone. It's kind of like you're releasing it to the universe 
to God, to whomever you believe in. For me, in my case, it's, it's to God. I release it to God. I can't worry about certain things because if something were to happen, say to my parents who live outside of my home, I live in Austin, they live in South Texas and they're almost 80. My father's turning 80 in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot, you know, as a daughter, as a Hispanic, us Mexican women, we worry a lot about our parents. It's just part of our culture. And so what I do is I call them every day and I FaceTime them. Uh, we did Zoom. That was a little tricky for them, but luckily my sister was around to download Zoom on their computer. Oh, so they could see me, and now they kind of know how to operate that. But for the most part, you know, the, we worry a lot, especially of our older parents because we're not with them. We can't visit them, especially right now to protect yeah. them. So yeah. these little things, you know, to stay in contact with them, even letter writing. We can actually go to like the olden days and send them a letter because isn't that so nice to receive a letter in the mail and to say somebody cares and loves you. I got a, yeah, I got a beautiful get well card today. I had surgery a few weeks ago, right? And I, I got this beautiful card in the mail. I thought, wow, that just brightened my day. That someone wow. took time to write a note, a beautiful note put a stamp, rate their address, you know, all of it, just said that that matters. You, I mattered enough that they did that. And yeah. that was really, really special. I think, I think the more electronically oriented we get, and as wonderful as that is, because I do, I FaceTime and things too. Um, I do think too, some of the value of the little things that we do that mean so much, mm -hmm. time out to do that. We're going to be seeing more of that too. Yeah. So it's just the simple things in life. You know, overthinking this is, is going to actually stress us out more, I think. <laughs> but just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it, you know, keep it personal to you. Whatever personal means to you. Um, that's, that would be my suggestion as a coach uh, to not overthink things right now because there's just too much. There's too much quiet time. And right now it's time to quiet the mind. The mind. You know, it's the time to just take advantage of the gift of time that we've been given with COVID-19. And it is really a gift of time. There's really zero excuses now for people to say, well, I don't have time, really? There's a lot of time. Uh, yeah. Well, There's you know, for, really distraction. There's very little external distractions, really. For some of the caregivers, not a lot has changed, except mm -hmm. fewer resources and things because they are already very much tied to the home depending on depending on the person that they're caring for right and so I think the keeping it simple is perfect <laughs> because you know I, I as someone had told me this once there are three types of business my business your business and God's business and mm -hmm. you, once you decide which is really yours and which is not yours you will lighten your plate so much and it was mm -hmm. true. It was true. And I would stop and say, oh, wait a second. That's God's business. That's not mine to be concerned with. I will concern with, with what I need to concern myself with. Or if I was thinking about someone else and, you know, coming up with plans, I'm like, hold on a second. That's not my business to do that. I can be supportive, but it's not my business to solve every problem. Yeah, it's, it's the same concept of focus on what you can do. Yes, and really surrender. Focus is really important. Uh, people don't realize uh, at times how important it is. Yeah. The law of focus. Do you, you know what the law of focus is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think your viewership knows? No. Why don't you share that, Sylvia? <laughs> I'm going to ask you. What you focus on, you find. What you focus on grows. What you focus on seems real. And ultimately, what you focus on, you become. So if, if you're constantly focused on what you can't do, that's what you're going to find everywhere. And it's going to grow and it's going to make these feelings get even bigger and a lot more elaborate than they actually are. And, and the mind uh, needs the space so that logic, the conscious mind can come in and make the logical choices for you. But when the feeling's so high, we got to bring that feeling down. Yeah. And the way of doing it is shifting the focus. So um, and for anyone who's having doubts, you think about whenever you're, for instance, you're thinking about buying a new car or a different car, and people say, I want a, a yellow VW bug. And pretty soon everywhere I look, I'm like, oh my gosh, there goes another one, and there goes another one, because I'm paying attention to that. Isn't that yes. my focus? They yeah. were always there. I just never knew it, right? And so, 
yeah, refocus. And so true. I, I find that focusing on good things, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, there's beauty all around us. Uh, it's a choice, really, that we make on a daily basis. Uh, and sometimes because we, we allow our uh, unconscious mind to kind of dictate our actions, we kind of fall into automatic responses. Mm -hmm. And that's where coaching can really come into play. Yeah. Because we can help you uh, unlock your unconscious mind so you are actually working with it instead of having it work for you, which may not be in your best, you know, uh, right. it may yeah. not be the best. And I think one of the key benefits of having someone else to talk to is that, um, I don't know about you, but I, I know for me, when I find that I'm slipping or sliding or not doing what I know I could do better, I mm -hmm. do beat myself up about it and then have that guilt and shame over not being good enough. I'm not good mm -hmm. enough as a caregiver. I'm not doing good enough. Or like, oh my gosh, I had a really negative day. And then I'm like wrapped up in all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, and we all tend to do that. Like, right? like, oh, I guess it's good for everybody else, but not me. <laughs> totally not true. It's a matter of the silly, simple things to say, wait a second. Rethink yeah. that. Change and that story. Change that story. Yeah, and you can. You can change that story. And what a lot of people don't realize either when stress goes really, really high um, is that certain patterns of behavior show up that have been there for a long, long time. And, and one in particular that's shown up a lot, I think, for most people is the escapist pattern. The escapist pattern is you, know, you escape into something you know, your work or into, and you, and you ignore what's like right in front of you because you don't want to, it's like the Pandora's box. You don't want to open it up, but, but the, the, so it'll show up and just realize, give yourself some grace on that. Uh, and be aware of those patterns so that you can say like, you just talked victim, the, oh, woe is me, you know, everybody and, else can do it but me. <laughs> we all can get stuck there. Right. And, and it, I have my husband who usually snap, snap me out of it. But if you don't have anybody there and you have your, you know, the person that you're in charge of mm -hmm. uh, and they're suffering from what they're suffering from, then catching yourself, like you caught yourself, like, hey, wait a minute. I'm a, and especially if you're doing your affirmations, I am, or even your power move to kind of snap out of it. And whatever that power move looks like for you, it could be very different for <laughs> There is so much that we can share about this. And Sylvia, you're going to be a guest again soon on Experts Digging In. We're going to talk about the, how we look at relationships when we become caregivers or we see our families uh, struggling, how that impacts our relationships. But I, I want you to give our audience a way that they can find you uh, and um, learn more from you. Okay. Well, my webpage is sylviawarsham.com. And there's a lot of information there on my Focus Fridays videos. If you go on my homepage, uh, you'll be able to click on and it will take you directly to my YouTube channel where I have a Focus Fridays video. And, and what that is, is focused on your personal growth. And I do a series, uh, I do a story with three strategies, uh, depending on what's going on in our world at the time. I know for the last couple of weeks, it's been COVID-19 to kind of empower individuals to essentially get out of their own way. Um, and that's what I do as an empowerment coach and keynote speaker. So beautiful. Yeah. We're going to post that in the comments also, or in the description. And, sure. um, you know, I watch those. I really need to go and comment and like, because it's so important <laughs> for your YouTube channel. It really is. Because I love them, but you wouldn't know it, right? So I'm going to follow the advice that I give people and go to you and make sure I comment. And like. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you any of your guests want to, have a coach to kind of hear them out. I'm, I'm really going to be offering complimentary during COVID-19, especially to your caregivers who are alone at home. And this can get really tough. So yeah. reach out to me and we'll, we'll schedule a complimentary 45-minute uh, chat. Uh, see, you guys, I told you Sylvia had a big heart and it's really, really sweet. So there you go. So we'll have that information on there. Thank you, Sylvia. And thank you all who are watching. Stay tuned because we'll have a whole lot more on experts to get in with doggies for dementia. And thank you, Sylvia. It was wonderful, wonderful to chat with you. And I'll I, see you soon. Bye, bye. now. Bye.